I think one of the cool things about power development we're looking at now is there are some very common signatures of rotary athletes of how they create this power from the ground. And uh, I, it's something cool that, that I can show you that you guys can try at home is if you have like a rotary chair, any chair that moves, right? And you guys can see me back here? Like a swivel stool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, right. So I got this, I actually bought this, this chair and we put rollerblade wheels on this. We have all different types of rotary chairs here because we actually use it as part of our training, you know, aids. It's like, it's another piece of equipment in your gym that can be really beneficial. Just be careful. I like the ones that have wide base so that players don't fall over. Mm -hmm. And what I do with my players is this, just to show them how important the ground is. And this way it leads into everything we look at SFMA with ankle mobility and stability. It just shows how all these are connecting. Is I take, let's say I'm a right-handed rotary athlete. So I'm, I'm rotating to the left. Let's say I'm hitting a hockey stick, baseball, throwing, anything rotating to the left for a right-handed player. I have them sit on a rotary chair like this, and I say, do me a favor. With your feet on the ground, just go ahead and rotate to the left, right? I'm like, don't fall off the chair, but rotate to the left. And they all, they all do it, and they do it in a different way. How they use the ground to rotate is what we're going to talk about here in a second, but they basically rotate. Then I say, do me a favor. Take your feet off the ground. You can try this at home, and I say, now rotate to the left. And they usually look at you like, Coach, I don't even know where to start. And I go, that's the whole point. Without the ground, it's, you, it's hard. you can't even create rotation. Right? So I say, first of all, now you understand how important the ground is. What I want to do is I want to test how you use the ground. And it's amazing to me, I call this the poor man's force plate on how well this translates to what we see on our force plates by testing them on a rotary chair. And one of the tests we do is this. I say, take your left foot off the ground, just using your right foot, rotate to the left, right? And if you're at home watching this, then you're following along, do this with me, right? So you right foot's on the chair, and right foot's on the ground and you rotate. Now do it twice and then ask yourself, what part of your foot are you pushing from, right? And you do it again and pay attention and pay attention to what you're pushing from. And then do the same experiment on the left leg. And again, we're always rotating to the left. A rotary athlete, we're rotating, our primary contact is rotating left. So I take the left foot and I rotate to the left as well. And I'm telling you, if you guys try this there too, you would see that some players, some athletes, you get them with their right foot and they can rotate. Some athletes get them on the right foot and they, they struggle rotating. Some you put them on their left leg and they literally don't even know how to use the left leg and some know how to use the left leg. And you'll see that translate into their rotary sport because what we see with the best players in the world is there are a couple types of torques that you create in the golf, in the golf swing, baseball swing, tennis. There's a, a torque, torque is a pushing and pulling. There's a twisting torque, right? So twisting, I call these guys the twisters. This is called horizontal plane torque. They can twist really, really well. And then there's what I call rocket rollers. This is what's called frontal plane torque. And the best players in the world, best rotary athletes, have a little bit of frontal plane and a little bit of twisting. They do a little bit of both, right? And this, these two torques help create power. And if you think about it, like the ability to do this and the ability to do this is why we look at all these movements that we look at because it's ultimately what's gonna turn into power. When you're on the chair here, the chair is one of the best ways to evaluate twisting, horizontal torque, right? Not the greatest for rock and roll, but it's one of the best for twisters. But like I said, that's, that's a big component for rotary athletes. And what we've noticed is that the best players in the world, if you look at their signatures on a force plate, what they're gonna do is they're gonna, on their trail leg, on the trail leg, they're actually gonna push the ground backwards. When they push the ground backwards, what does the ground do? the ground pushes forward, right? So when they push the ground backwards, the ground pushes forward and it helps them rotate their body. With the lead leg, they push the lead leg forward because when they push the lead leg forward, the ground pushes the lead side backwards. And it's this couple, this force couple called a torque that helps them create rotary power. So when you're on a chair, the most ideal pressure points where you should feel your feet is when you're using your left leg, you should be pushing from the ball of your left foot. Ball of the left foot, rotates you to the left. You should be pushing from the inside heel of your right foot. This is what we see with the most powerful rotary athletes is they push backwards with the right foot, forward with the left foot, right? Now, I, 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 you might be saying, okay, so who cares? I've found that if you give them the appropriate mobility and stability in their ankles, hips, spine, and then you show them how to use it, we get the best bang for the buck. 